Hayegit, or doing Dorothy Sayers' Creed or Chaos, a series of short essays by that great Christian writer. This is the fourth of the essays, The Dogma is the Drama. Seems a little enigmatic. Let's see what it's about. Any stigma, said a witty tongue, will do to beat a dogma. Hmm. And the flails of ridicule have been brandished with such energy of late on the threshing floor of controversy that the true seed of the word has become well-nigh lost amid the whirling of chaff. Christ, in his divine innocence, said to the woman of Samaria, Ye worship, ye know not what, being apparently under the impression that it might be desirable on the whole to know what one was worshipping. Now, of course, Sayers is writing this at the, at the beginning of World War II, so she's, she's getting a read upon the temperature of the times, even before the crisis of the world's greatest war ever came upon us all in the Western world. So she's talking about England in the 1930s and this misapprehension of what Christianity was even back then, yes, over 80 years ago. And she goes on, He thus showed himself, that is Jesus with the woman of Samaria, sadly out of touch with the 20th century mind, for the cry today is, away with the tedious complexities of dogma. Let us have that simple spirit of worship. Just worship, no matter of what. The only drawback to this demand for a generalized and undirected worship is the practical difficulty of arousing any sort of enthusiasm for the worship of nothing in particular. It would not perhaps be altogether surprising if, in this nominally Christian country, where the creeds are daily recited, there were a number of people who knew all about Christian doctrine and disliked it. It is more startling to discover how many people there are who heartily dislike and despise Christianity without having the faintest notion what it is. If you tell them, they cannot believe you. I do not mean that they cannot believe the doctrine. That would be understandable enough, since it takes some believing. I mean that they simply cannot believe that anything so interesting, so exciting, so dramatic can be the orthodox creed of the church. Though this is really the case was made plain to me by the questions asked me, mostly by young men, about my Canterbury play, which is called The Zeal of Thy House. The action of the play involves a dramatic presentation of a few fundamental Christian dogmas, in particular the application to human affairs of the doctrine of the Incarnation. That the Church believed Christ to be in any real sense God, or that the eternal Word was supposed to be associated in any way with the work of creation, that Christ was held to be at the same time man, in any real sense of the word, that the doctrine of the Trinity could be considered to have any relation to fact, or any bearing on psychological truth, that the Church considered pride to be sinful, or indeed took notice of any sin beyond the more disreputable sins of the flesh, all these things were looked upon as astonishing and revolutionary novelties, imported into the faith by the feverish imagination of a playwright. I protested, in vain, against this, this flattering tribute to my powers of invention, referring my inquirers to the creeds, to the gospels, and to the offices of the church. I insisted that if my play was dramatic, it was so not in spite of the dogma, but because of it. That, in short, the dogma was the drama. The explanation was, however, not well received. It was felt that if there was anything attractive in Christian philosophy, I must have put it there myself. Judging by what my young friends tell me, and also by what is said on the subject in anti-Christian literature written by people who ought to have taken a little trouble to find out what they were attacking before attacking it, I have come to the conclusion that a short examination paper on the Christian religion might be very generally answered as follows. And she, she has here the, a little parody of that examination paper. Question. What does the church think of God the Father? Answer. He is omnipotent and holy. He created the world and imposed on man conditions impossible of fulfillment. He's very angry if these are not carried out. He sometimes interferes by means of arbitrary judgments and miracles distributed with a good deal of favoritism. He likes to be chuckled to and is always ready to pounce on anybody who trips up over a difficulty in the law or is having a bit of fun. He's rather like a dictator, only larger and more arbitrary. Question. What does the church think of God the Son? 
Answer. He is in some way to be identified with Jesus of Nazareth. It was not his fault that the world was made like this, and unlike God the Father, he's friendly to man and did his best to reconcile man to God. He has a good deal of influence with God, and if you want anything done, it is best to apply to him. Next time, more of this uh, parody on the general impression that Christianity seems to have made upon the British public of the 1930s. I'm linking to Louis Burkhoff's terrific book on the growth of Christian doctrine, his portion specifically on the growth of the Trinity doctrine, because I believe that nothing is more misunderstood than this, well, at least 16-year-old, 1600-year-old doctrine, the doctrine of the Trinity. Misunderstood and therefore the causer of much mischief. Some of it uh, Sayers deals with quite humorously in the next segment.